So I love to start off every service with uh, just some random stupid jokes. Um, what's the difference between in-laws and outlaws? Outlaws are wanted. Outlaws are wanted. Get it? My wife told me to stop acting like a flamingo, so I had to put my foot down. So God called John to come forth and he will receive eternal life, but John came fifth and got a free toaster. Come forth. Get it? Um, you guys want one more? Or? Yes. <laughs> Can't end with that. Uh, I don't have a girlfriend, so these are jokes, so listen. I, I, I told my girlfriend she drew her eyebrows too high. She seemed surprised. That's all I got. She seemed surprised. Well, today I want to talk about three words that will radically transform your life, and that's compassion, faith, and prayer. Compassion, faith, and prayer. And those three words are put into that order on purpose. As we have compassion, we will have faith, and then we will pray through compassion. The other day, I was walking to work, and uh, there was this guy that was coming out of his house, and there was a lot of commotion going on at his house. I'm on the other side of the street, and there's a lot of doors being slammed, a lot of arguing, and I'm walking past, and in the past, I've like gotten involved in those situations, which I invite you not, don't do that. It's, it's not your situation. It's not a good point. So I'm on the other side of the street, and I kind of see what's happening, and then he comes firing out of the house, and he's walking down on the other side of the street, and he's carrying two garbage bags. And so I kind of acted like I needed to get to the other side of the street just so I could have a conversation with him. And uh, crossed over to the other side, and I'm like, hey, man, how's it going? You know, I just kind of gave him that nod. And he's like, I was like, so how's it going? He's like, not good. And I was like, yeah, what's going on? And so, like, he sets his bags down and starts to tell me what's going on in his life. There's a lot of things going on. And um, after he vented for a little while, I was able to just say, like, would you mind if I just prayed for you? And he said, Sure. And so I put my hand on his shoulder and just prayed for him. I didn't know what to pray specifically, you know, uh, but I knew that I was supposed to let him know that Jesus sees him in this moment here. Not only is Jesus on the mountaintops, but he's also in the valleys with us. He's everywhere in life. And so I just prayed that over him, that, that he would just know that God sees him in the situation. He's going to give him the right direction to go and and the Lord, the Lord has plans even in this, you know, even out of this mess that uh, God's going to make something good. And as I began to pray for him, he just started crying. And so we're just on the side of the street, two guys. <laughs> He's, we're just, you know, crying and um, finished the prayer and just said amen. And he said, thank you so much for doing that. Like, that meant a lot. And uh, he packs up, grabs his bags, and gets going down this way. And I walked off to work. And so, um, can I be really honest with you guys? Nine times out of ten in my day, I am not looking for that conversation. I have things I'm getting done. I have so many tasks. I am a very task-oriented person, so I love accomplishing stuff. That's not really something that I planned on accomplishing that day by any means. But nine times out of 10, if I'm going to work, I'm going to work, right? And I'm hurrying up and I'm getting there and I'm doing whatever work has in front of me. But that day I was moved with compassion for his situation. There was something going on that I was like, man, I could at least have a conversation with him. Like compassion moves us to do radical things. Compassion. I want to show you the meaning of compassion because this, like, this blew my mind. Compassion, can you put up this slide? Or did I not give you a slide? Yeah, compassion is a sympathetic consciousness of others' distress 
together with a desire to alleviate it. So like all of a sudden you become conscious of people around you. Whoa, (laughs) there's people in my life. I'm around them all the time. And you have this compassion for them. You're all of a sudden conscious to their situation and you want to help so much that you want to alleviate their situation. You want, to, you want to be a part of it. So in that moment, I like stepped foot in his shoes for a moment. It's like, man, this is really rough. And that's what compassion does. Is it, it puts us in somebody else's shoes. A lot of times when we think of compassion, we think of Compassion International, and we think of anywhere besides our surroundings. So you got to get in a bus, and you must drive 24 hours to have compassion. Or you got to get on a plane and dig wells for compassion. But compassion can actually be something that will fuel your life, that will take mundane things that you normally do, and all of a sudden turn them into like amazing moments with God that blesses people around you. Compassion does that. It's the fuel. And out of compassion, you'll have faith and you'll have prayers. You'll have powerful prayers for people. I want to look at Acts 3, Acts 3, 1. And you're going to see how the disciples are moved with compassion. And then all of a sudden, they have crazy amounts of faith and they pray. So if you guys want to turn your Bibles, Acts 3, 1, we're going to read through 1 through 10. I'm going to go ahead and pray. And then uh, we're going to jump right in. Lord, we thank you so much for the plans that you have for today, for the, the word um, from your scriptures, Lord, that it, it speaks directly to our hearts, to every single one of us in this room, that you have amazing plans for your word for each one of us. I thank you that you didn't just bring us here by chance, but you want to really speak to us that this was part of your purpose, this was part of your plans to to get us together to um, hear about what you want to do in our life. So Lord, I just choose to get out of your way. Would your word just speak directly through through me and would it just speak directly to people's hearts? In Jesus' name, amen. One thing I love about gathering together is like when you say amen, there's power behind it because We all say it together, and we can say it in power. We can say it in strength. So amen? Amen. One more time. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I love love hearing that. It's like, oh, yeah, we agree. Like, God, speak to us. Amen? Amen. All right. Keep it going. I'm going to go ahead and read... (laughs) I'm going to go ahead and read through Acts 3, 1 through 10, and then we're going to break it down. So I'm going to read the entire story. It says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. And these guys pray a lot. Okay. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg to, from those who were going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Remember that. What did he do? He looked straight at him. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but I give to you what I I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet, began to walk. Then he went with them to the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Isn't that an amazing story? Have you guys ever heard that story before? How many have heard that story before in the past? All right, cool. So it's just an amazing story of Peter and John. The church is growing. Peter and John are got a lot to do. They're getting things accomplished. They're going to pray. And all of a sudden, they're moved with compassion. Did you see that? They're moved with compassion. I want to say this is somebody that Peter and John have walked past in the, before, Okay, so like they go to the temple, 
And so they walk past this person. It says that he was sat there every single day. So it's like that one person that's always in the same exact place with the same sign that sits there every single day is the same one. So Peter and John have, have witnessed this guy in the past. But this one's different because they were moved with compassion. So I want you to think, like in your life, there's, there's people that we're surrounded with. Maybe it's on our route to work. It's that same exact person that we see. Maybe there's somebody in your workplace that, man, you know, you, you've had conversations with them in the past and, and it's like, oh, I don't really have time. I don't really have interest. I don't really have compassion for them right now. So I'm just going to like move on. It's going to keep going. Everybody, you know, there's, there's people in our life that God surrounds us with like that. And that's why Peter and John are, they're moved with compassion by somebody they see all the time. They're always going to the temple courts. When they get moved with compassion, they, they are actually filled with great faith to pray for him. Peter doesn't just turn and, and walk the other way or, you know, all of a sudden, like, put on some blinders. Have you ever been to Chicago? If you go to Chicago a lot, I get from destination to destination in Chicago. That's just what I do. But this was an opportunity to go, wait, there's people around me. And God moved on their hearts with compassion One thing I love about this, this scripture is it says that they said, look at me. Peter and John looked straight at him, and then they said, look at us. Eye contact creates compassion. We don't have a whole lot of eye contact today. Eye contact creates compassion. You see somebody else's situation when you look at their eyes. And so it's not Peter and John like kind of, you know, veer off and then just look the other way. We got to go to the temple. They look directly at him, create compassion. They look at him. They look at his eyes. And then they say, look at me. And notice that they didn't give him the answer that he was wanting. They said, I'm not going to give you two bucks, but what I do have, what I do have, I give to you. They were moved with compassion. Hey, I see beyond your situation of $2, and I actually see what's going to fix this situation. And then what do they do? They have great faith because they were moved with compassion. They pray a prayer over him, and he gets up and walks. Compassion increases our awareness of others. It increases our energy to help others. And it gets our focus off our day-to-day -day mundane things that we need to do in life and actually creates opportunities for God to use us consistently. Every single day, God has a purpose. He has a plan. He has people that we're surrounded with that he wants to break our hearts for to have compassion so I'd like to end with two couple, couple other things that compassion does. Compassion will increase your faith. Your faith will be increased when you have compassion for a situation. Without compassion, we have a story of Peter and John walk to the temple. Good story. <laughs> so with compassion, all of a sudden, now they have an opportunity to apply faith. How much faith does it take to grab somebody by the hand and pull them up? That's a lot of faith. It's a lot of faith to grab somebody who's been lame from birth and pull them up and say, be healed in Jesus' name. Walk. That's faith. But their hearts were broken for his situation, and so it increased their faith to have enough faith to pull them up by the hand. Compassion did that. Not only did it increase Peter and John's faith, not only did it increase his faith, but it increased the entire church's faith because everybody saw him run around dancing, praising God. And so all, this church, the, all of a sudden the church is like, oh, isn't that the same guy that's always outside? The church is like increased in faith. God can do amazing things. So it increased their faith through compassion. 
And the last thing is, is compassion increased their prayers. When we have compassion for other people, all of a sudden our prayers get so uh, minute focused on us and they become really big God prayers. A lot of times I've heard like, I, I just feel like I'm just kind of praying the same thing over and over again. Cool, one idea is pray for other people's situation. And that will actually break up your prayer life a little bit, like where you feel like, oh, God could actually heal a huge situation. It increased them to pray, that compassion did. How many of you like some compassion? Some compassion. We got one person that compa- wants to be more compassionate. <laughs> All these things happen through being aware and conscious to help others' situations. I just really feel like the Lord wants to increase our compassion level as a whole, that we could have compassion for situations we didn't have compassion for. Um, The opposite of compassion is frustration. You just get frustrated with stuff, frustrated with people when you lose compassion for them. So if you feel a lot of frustration, maybe the Lord wants to increase your compassion. I can relate gotta run. I gotta be fueled with compassion. Just have to. How many of you would love to actually live out like what you see the disciples doing in Acts? Would that be cool? I mean, are there people in your life that you could think, man, I would love to have enough faith to pray that type of prayer where you actually grab somebody's hand, that type of prayer. So the the Bible, the book of Acts is not for the separate group of people. What it's for is for the church, okay? It's for the church. It's for every one of us to apply to our life. We can actually implement this stuff. You don't need me to pray for something. You can pray for something. All of us are equipped Jesus Christ died on the cross for every single person in this room, and he rose again for every single person in this room also. We're all equipped with the power to save. And if you have enough faith to pray, you have enough faith to raise the dead. If you have enough faith to pray, the only reason that Jesus got upset with the disciples about faith is because they didn't pray about the situation. They just complained about it. Oh, there's all these people and we don't have enough food. And Jesus is like, oh, how much longer do I got to be with you guys? Why don't you just pray about it? Ye have little faith. It wasn't that they had little faith. It, wasn't, it was that they didn't pray. They didn't apply the stuff Jesus was teaching them. And so every single one of us can actually live this type of stuff out where God breaks a heart for a current situation and we have enough faith in the situation to grab somebody by the hand and pull them up. That's for all of us. That's for everyone. And so wouldn't that be amazing to live life with eyes wide open, to be cautious, conscious of other situations and be able to step out in faith and just pray. Would that be cool? Got one of you. All right. Well, for one of you, I will, I will preach. That's what God wants to do in his church. He wants to fill his church with, with faith and powerful prayers. He wants to move through signs and wonders that draws people to God. He wants to have a relationship with you that's so connected that as you walk past somebody or somebody in your workplace or somebody that you're doing life with, the Lord actually will say, like, stop, talk to them, ask them how they're doing. You know how powerful it is to just ask somebody, how are you? And so, so so many times in my own life, I'm just so busy doing God's work that I forget to even ask people, how are you? How powerful is that? He wants to fill his church with compassion for people. 
and faith to pray out amazing prayers. That's what he wants to do in people like you and me. And so I'd love to just pray over us that the Lord would just give us crazy amounts of compassion right now. And then what I'd love to invite you into is this week, here's one way you can apply this. When you notice that you're supposed to pray for a situation, do it. (laughs) Well, think about it. Because the more you think about it, how many of you have like felt like I'm supposed to pray for somebody and then you put it on the back burner and like for the next three or four days, you're like, I should have just prayed for them, right? So many times in life, like, oh, I could like really be Jesus to this person. Like, ah, just do it. Just go for it. Be bold. Remember the story, grabbing somebody by the hand. So be bold in the prayer. And so as the Lord gives you compassion for somebody, as somebody's situation, go ahead and just pray. And here's the great thing with prayer, guys. You can't screw it up. You can't screw it up. You can't, ah, geez, I wish I would have had the right words to say. What was Peter and John's prayer? Get up and walk. (laughs) Like, how simple is that? In Jesus' name. So like, you can't screw this stuff up. As the Lord fills you with compassion, you're gonna have opportunities to actually apply this stuff. And so I invite you, like, just try it out. Just try it out this week. Be Jesus' hands and feet to the people that are around you. Be full of compassion and just pray. It's super fun. And it brings light to your day and, and other people, right? All right. Remember that whole amen thing? Can I get an amen? amen. If you agree with any of this stuff, can I get an amen? Amen. All right, cool. Well, let's pray, because I'm going to just invite the Lord to just fill us with compassion uh, right now. So if you're like, man, I have been very frustrated lately with people, I want to go ahead and invite you to just like put your hands out like you're receiving a gift. If you're saying, you know what, I would like to be filled with compassion, more compassion for people, I just invite you to just go ahead, just put your hands out like you're receiving a gift. The reason we do this is because sometimes it's just a willingness and openness to just say, yeah, that's me, God. I want to be filled with compassion. I want what you have for me. So Lord, we just, uh, we just come before you right now in Jesus' name that, that um, by what you've done for each one of us, that we can, we can actually have your presence and your power living inside of us. And so Lord, would you just fill each one of us with this word compassion, that we'd be cautious, conscious of other situations, Lord. And um, would you just give us faith to Uh, Pray prayers that alleviate it. Prayers that are powerful, bigger than ourself. Prayers that are are, uh, larger than what we could just accomplish on our own. Lord, would you just give us amazing prayers for people that you put in our life. Have your way, God.